Not a bad fish. I'm just gonna flick this one up above him. See if we can get him. Got him. Oh, nice little fish. G'day everyone, on the Acheron River today, the plan is to do some dry fly nymph fishing to try and catch some trout as always. I'm on the middle section here, gonna fish up through a little bit of this stuff, then afterwards I'll try and head up to the, the headwaters and fish the river up there. A lot smaller, completely different river. A lot of brown trout in this river, not heaps of rainbows like some of the surrounding tributaries, but still a nice, as you can see, lovely spot to fish. So let's try and catch some. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start here. Just work up, there's a nice run there, there's a bridge, there's another run above. Got a nymph rod and a single dry rod. I'm just gonna pop the nymph rod down for a second and just because there's no harm in doing it, just gonna flick the dry up through this flat section of water. It's not a very invasive way to fish. You can't really, like you, you just won't really spook them and you can get multiple goes at them sometimes. So, gonna drift the dry through there, make some casts up here at range. Don't need to get too close to them to do that. And if one doesn't eat it, I'm gonna go through with the nymph after. Then I'll probably just push through with the nymph up to the bridge. You know, I would've thought as it just drops into this hole here, there should be one. It just depends if he's willing to come up and eat the dry. And that's why having a nymphing rod ready is so important. Right. I mean, that's why I've got the nymph rod here and the dry rod, just so you can really feel it out, give them a few different presentations. And inevitably over the course of a day, you're gonna get a pretty good idea for how the fish actually want it, what they wanna eat. Does surprise me. Surely on the edge of this gravel and sand. Oh, oh, how did I miss him? He ate that very quickly. Got to be in that soft slack stuff through there. A bit further up looks like the best spot. There's one. Nice little brown. Oh, thank you, buddy. Lovely little fish. The fly's popped out. Well, there he is. Hopefully, we can find a few more of those little guys. Interesting though that he was happy to be, well there was one in this, this little soft patch here but there wasn't one just where I nymphed through just before so one of the mysteries of fishing. That's the spot there and further up. That was good, straight into the tree.
All right, this is my best looking stuff up here, just where that cast is, a bit further across as well. Got him, he ate the dry. He refused that the first time. Thank you, mate. That was so weird, the fly landed. It's all a bit tangled up, the fly landed. And he came up, boiled at it, and then it just, uh, the fly just disappeared a second later. And he had it fall off there, buddy. All right, let's see if we can pick off a couple of fish up through here. This is, this is gold when you're on the Acheron, that medium pace. Flat water, not too many log jams or weed pockets interfering with the current. Just nice mid pace water. And the browns tend to like it. What's that? It's a nice fish. This is the kind of water we've been looking for. That's a nice little brown. That is a perfect example of a lovely little Acheron River trout. That guy is awesome. All right, that's good. Restores, restores some confidence. Sometimes when you fish through a few lovely spots, you start questioning, is it you or what is it? But, you know, fish don't always eat. So again, you have that process you go through your process, you execute well, and you're going to catch some. I'm going around this log jam. Oops, bad sloppy cast. All right. Tempted to pick up my dry fly rod and actually throw a dry up this edge, it's a bit slow for nymph below dry because the risk is your nymph just falls and hooks on the bottom. Like that over there is perfect for nymph below dry. Oh, or just a single dry like that. You ate that beautifully. Come here, buddy. It's a nice little fish. That seems to be the size in this section. I was saying to Kane, oh, he's been caught before as well. Look at that. I was saying to Kane before, I haven't fished this section since I was about 18. So that's, I don't know how long ago that is. 10 years ago, nine years ago. Thank you, little buddy. Yeah, that seems to be what's here. Just a nice little modest sized fish. Nice little small stream fish. All right, I'm just gonna do what I, just what I said before. I think it's just worth a couple of casts up with a single dry, just in case there is one on this edge up here where I can't really fish. Up there where I can't fish a straight uh, straight, nymph, sorry, a nymph below dry very well. So, back to the orange tag sedge. Oops, that seems off. So, just throw the single dry up this edge. I can see this getting eaten. Like that. He's a small one, but 
that's what we were after. Oop, he's popped off. I mean, that's exactly why we did that. So that's awesome. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, there you go. Finished up with the Acheron here. Um, you can see that's the bridge there. It's the log I finished at. I'm gonna try and run down, well, drive, run, drive up to some of the upper sections just to get in a couple of spots, see if I can quickly sneak a fish in there for you guys. Um, <laughs> if the video ends here, you know what happened, I ran out of time. But I'm gonna go there now, just maybe even I might just show you the water if I, uh, even if I can't fish it to get you and give you an idea of it. So uh, yeah, let's quickly de-rig, jump up to the car, which is at the bridge there, and we'll get to the next spot. Okay, so made it here to the upper Acheron. This is kind of what the headwaters look like. I haven't gone as far up just because it gets even more enclosed and I want the lighting to be good. It's about four o'clock now. Started fishing at the other spot at 2.30. Quickly tried to cram that in and then come up here to show you this water. So what I'm gonna do, just gonna rig up the one rod. I'm gonna walk down, fish up through some of these pockets, try and uh, catch fish to finish off the video. So let's go. All right, made it up here. Like I always say with these small streams is Hit that soft water with some depressions. This water here looks great. Also that stuff up there. So I'm just gonna poke through it. As I said earlier, don't have heaps of light left. This time of year, it just disappears on you. <laughs> so gonna poke through, nymph below dry here. I, I have caught them up this high on a worm before, even though it's crystal clear, a uh, little worm fly. So I'm just gonna fish through this quickly. They still might eat a dry for me at this time of day so it's just about fishing short hitting out those soft depressions you know they'll still eat a dry they'll still eat a dry this time of year up high because these fish are quite opportunistic Getting good body position in these small streams is so, so important because sometimes your hotspot in your pocket is super small. I'm seeing that nice bit of depth there. So I'm really hugging this right edge to give myself some angle to, to flick up a little bow and arrow cast like that. There he is. How cool is that? Oh, that's a lovely fish. The lovely brown one spooked out of this pocket as well. That just is so cool. Come here, buddy. That water is cold. There we go. There he goes. Ah, oh, that was so cool. I'm so happy with that. Again, this looks lovely up here. Really, like I said, you find in that, in high gradient water, where it's cold, if you find that soft stuff, you can often find an opportunity, find a fish. Oh. Stay there, where has he gone? I saw that fish eat my nymph and my dry did not do anything and I didn't feel anything. All right, I've just got a nice fish. I think he's the one I've missed, which is why I've changed my nymph. I'm not sure if you can see him because of the glare. He's just sitting off the back of a stick. He's in a little sandy depression. It's not a bad fish. I'm just gonna flick this one up above him. See if we can get him. Got him. Oh. Nice little fish. I'm glad I changed the nymph for that. I changed from my silver beaded pheasant tail to a little caddis. And I got him, he's a chunky fish. He rose when we were changing flies as well. Nice little brown on the nymph. That is so cool. That's why, you know, the Acheron's so underrated, but it's just such a lovely river and the fish are beautiful. 
nymph under dry air and just hitting these soft little edges like this. There he is. Oh. Just like that, Al. <laughs> That's another nice trout. That's a lovely one. There we go. All right, we might wrap the video up on that because my mate Al, who's up there on the bank watching, we're gonna have a fish. So, release him. Lovely little, lovely little trout. All right, wrapped up there. Nice little fish. Um, hopefully that was interesting. Two different sections of the river. I feel like the upper section, because I've only fished about 50 meters of it, just this pool, the little run in beneath them here. The upper section's been better for me today. Um, but again, only fished for, you know, an hour maybe total so far. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like uh, the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next video. Thanks guys.